Twenty years ago, the world was awash with reports about Salman Rushdie's book, The Satanic Verses, for which he received the usual Muhammadan Muslim response to any criticism or investigation of Muhammadan Islam, a fatwa, that is a religious decision to have him assassinated. Was there and is there a record of these verses in Muhammadan Islam? Muhammadan Islam, basing its monotheism on that of the Israelites and their Torah, strongly opposes idolatry, polytheism, and associating anything or anyone with God. This contrasts sharply with the contention by Muhammad's Arab contemporaries who believe that Allah had associates. Some of these associates are mentioned in the Quran. Among them are three female deities, Al-Lat, Al-Uzza, wal Manat, who were, according to the religious beliefs of the pagan Arabs, the daughters of Allah, the supreme deity of the Kaaba. Each had a shrine in separate places not far from Mecca in Arabia, where Muhammad was born and began his mission. Although the Quran in its present form obviously rejects these deities, Muslim history asserts otherwise. The Islamic records assert that Muhammad actually spoke Satan's words as if they were the words of Allah. This event is documented by several early Muhammadan scholars and is referenced in the Hadith and the Quran. Later Muhammadan scholars, ashamed and embarrassed that their self-declared prophet spoke Satan's words, denied the event occurred. A myriad of excuses and contorted stories have been put forth by these later scholars to cover up Muhammad's sinful error. It must be very clearly pointed out that the Satanic Verses event is not something made up by non-Muslims. The event is recorded by the earliest Islamic sources available reporting on Muhammad's life. No one should think that it is a story made up by people who are critical of Islam. It is an episode directly found in the early Islamic records. This subject is one of the most controversial in Muhammadan Islam because allegedly Satan was able to deceive Muhammad and thus insinuate himself in the Quran by causing Muhammad to recite his words as if they were Allah's words. Muhammadans always use the mantra, bring forth the proof. Well, the proof is as follows. This event is actually documented by the four early biographical writers of Muhammad's life. Ibn Ishaq's Sirat Rasulullah, Al-Waqidi, Ibn Sa'ad's Kitab al-Tabaqat al-Kabir, and Tabari's History. The Hadith and Quran also contain direct references. Additionally, several other Islamic scholars on Hadith, called traditions, support the event's occurrence, such as Ibn Abi Hatim, Ibn al-Mundhir, Ibn Marduya, Musa ibn Uqba, and Abu Ma'shar. It is all the more strange that Ibn Hajar, a recognized authority on traditions, insists on the truth of this report and says, as we have mentioned above, three of its chain of narrators satisfy the conditions requisite for an authentic report. Because of time constraints, we shall explore Al-Tabari's version of the events and those who need more detail should go to our definition section in our website. Tabari, Volume 6.107 Satan casts a false revelation on the Messenger of Allah's tongue. The Messenger of Allah was eager for the welfare of his people and wished to effect a reconciliation with them in whatever ways he could. He longed in his soul that something would come to him from Allah which would reconcile him with his tribe. With his love for his tribe and his eagerness for their welfare, it would have delighted him if some of the difficulties which they made for him could have been smoothed out. And he debated with himself and fervently desired such an outcome. Then Allah revealed. Chapter 53, verse 19. Have ye thought upon Allah and Al-Uzza and Manat the third, the other? At this very moment, Satan allegedly cast on his tongue because of his inner debates and what he desired to bring to his people, the words. These are the exalted Gharaniq, whose intercession is to be hoped for. When the Quraysh heard this, they rejoiced and were happy and delighted at the way in which he spoke of their gods. 
and they listened to him. While the Muslims, having complete trust in their Prophet in respect of the messages which he brought from Allah, did not suspect him of error, illusion or mistake. When he came to the prostration, having completed the Surah, he prostrated himself and the Muslims did likewise, following their Prophet, trusting in the message which he had brought and following his example. Those polytheists of the Quraysh and others who were in the mosque likewise prostrated themselves because of the reference to their gods which they had heard, so that there was no one in the mosque, believer or unbeliever, who did not prostrate himself. The Quraysh left delighted by the mention of their gods which they had heard saying, Muhammad has mentioned our gods in the most favorable way possible, stating in his recitation that they are the high-flying cranes, Gharanaq, and that their intercession is received with approval. It is very important to point out here and now that Muhammad and his Muslim followers were prostrating themselves and praying in a purely pagan mosque, a house of idolatry, since they were surrounded by the rock gods of the Quraysh. Muhammad should not have done so at all as an alleged monotheist. This only shows that he was always willing to compromise his beliefs until such time as he could overcome or destroy all those who did not believe as he did, as in fact he eventually achieved. Then Gabriel came to the Messenger of Allah and said, Muhammad, what have you done? You have recited to the people that which I did not bring to you from Allah, and you have said that which was not said to you. Then the Messenger of Allah was much grieved and feared Allah greatly, but Allah sent down a revelation to him, for he was merciful to him, consoling him and making the matter light for him, informing him that there had never been a prophet or a messenger before him who desired as he desired and wished as he wished, but that Satan had cast words into his recitation, as he had cast words on Muhammad's tongue. Then Allah cancelled what Satan had thus cast and established his verses by telling him, that he was like other prophets and messengers, and replaced the offending satanic verses with, What? For you the male sex and for him the female? Behold, such would be indeed a division most unfair. The question that any inquisitive mind will ask is, how many other verses in the Quran were actually revealed to Muhammad by Satan and not Gabriel? The satanic verses also destroy another challenge in the Quran. Surah Bani Israel, chapter 17, verse 88 say, If the whole of mankind and jinn were put together to produce the like of this Quran, they could not produce the like thereof, even if they backed up each other with help and support. Ladies and gentlemen, it is clear from the above that in desperation and in a moment of weakness, Muhammad was willing to compromise his monotheism by conceding to allow the daughters of Allah to remain as intercessor in his Islam. That is, he was willing to allow three other associates with Allah. Muhammad actually sinned, and all the excuses that we read and all the explanations are used to hide a very simple fact. Muhammad kafara, because he associated other gods with Allah. When he realized the enormity of what he had done, he repented, and to rectify his error, he first accused the innocent Satan of having tricked him and then revealed the very conveniently descended abrogating verses followed by others in which Allah only admonished him and made light banter of his enormous sin. Neither Satan, Gabriel, nor Allah were involved. It was all Muhammad at his very best, deceitful, wily, beguiling, and very much in control of his mostly very superstitious, ignorant, fearful, illiterate, and totally obedient flock.